Okay, everyone, today it is time to talk about what is a string in C, and you've probably figured it out. Strings are arrays of chars. So when we type in something in our program, like char s128, so that's, that's not using the type def, but just using it directly, and we can say an assignment statement like, um, a string what this does is it actually creates uh, an array of size 128 in memory so there's a few things to note about this so first of all this array of 128 chars um, and the first chars are in the array are a s t r i and and g okay so that's because that's what i put um so this is the first one two three four five six seven chars and uh one thing that gets really interesting with strings is that we frequently don't use the whole size of that array for our string so like in this case and in most cases you don't you know, we declared this to be an array of size 128, but in fact, we're only really using the first seven to hold our string. And so the length, so 128 is the size. So the length of this string is seven. And that's because the eighth char, which is at index seven, is a special one, which is... Um, you write it like this in C backslash zero, which is called a null byte or a null character. So in C, this is different than some other languages, but in C, a string is always an array. And uh, we have, like any other array, array, we have to have the size of the array. But strings also have this other notion, which is the length of the string. And the length can be smaller than the size. In fact, it must be smaller than the size. We'll get into that detail in a moment. Um, but the length can be much smaller. In this case, the length is only seven, even though the size is 128. And the way that we indicate the length of a string is with the null byte. So the null byte um, happens right after the first, um, right after the last uh, actual contents of the string. So in this case, the string would be A S T R I N G null. That's what would be stored inside that array. Okay, let's look at an example and see what this actually means. Here's a small program that just asks for somebody's name and their favorite color. And notice that I've uh, declared both of these arrays to be size eight. We could declare them to be size 128. That's what we've been doing so far with our type def with C string. Now we don't necessarily need to use that type def. We can just say that, hey, these are arrays of chars and they have some size. Um, 128 is a good starting point size. That's a good, uh, overkill kind of make sure that it's longer than what you need but let's make these shorter to explore how it's actually working so this is going to be called bounds two and because i have very creative variable uh program names today so if i say dan and blue it's going to say dan's favorite color is blue well let's explore that a little more uh i want to write a loop to show me all the contents of the name array so I'm gonna say for int i equals zero, i is less than eight. So this is our standard for loop to go through an array. And for each one, I'm gonna say name at index i is some character. And I'll also say the ASCII value as an integer. So this should be uh, the I, I want to be also variable. So I'll say, so that's what goes in these brackets. And then the character will be name at index I. So that's a char that'll go in right here. And then I'll also take that same value and cast it to an int to say what's the ASCII value of it. Just out of curiosity. All right, so now that we know that uh, strings are just character arrays we can access them just like any other array character by character let's check this out and what we see is that uh, d a n are the first three letters 
And then the next character is definitely going to be a null byte uh, ASCII zero. And now it happens just because most things in memory around when we start our programs happen to be zeros, is that the rest of this also happens to be zero. But actually, these values back here could be anything. All that matters is that the first one after the last actual letter in the string is a, is a zero, is a null. And now let's try to break this. <laughs> so we spent a bunch of the last little section, last video thinking about array out of bounds. And so now let's think about um, what would make this go out of bounds. So let's say if I pick a slightly longer name like um, Brianne, and Brianne's favorite color is red, um, this one is still fine. Why is it fine? Because Brianne, what's the length of this string? You can count it up. It's seven letters long. And so that's enough room to store all the letters of the string plus this all-important ASCII byte. And so we see Brianne's favorite color is red. That looks great. So what if I chose a longer name like uh, Stephanie? Stephanie is longer than eight characters. Uh, so that's definitely going to go outside of the bounds of this array. But I don't get any error. And let's see. Maybe Stephanie's favorite color is purple. So what happens is that within this array itself, we don't have enough room to store this string, um, but we didn't tell the, uh, Scanf about how what's the size of this array. Scanf didn't know about that size, so Scanf is just doing its thing. It's just storing these letters until it reaches the N, then it puts in an all byte. So it stored S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E, -E, and then an all byte, but those aren't actually part of this array. And so from the perspective afterwards, it's like this is a within the array, there's no end to this string. And something really ha interesting happens when we run it is that we see the name kind of became Stephanie Purple. So what in the world is going on here? Maybe you have some guesses. And if not, I'll tell you. In this particular example, what's happening is that we have the compiler made the decision. And again, this could be different if you ran this on your own computer or with a different compiler or on a different day. But today, I have two arrays. They're both size eight. So let me make those up. Okay. And the name is stored first and the color is stored second in memory. <clears throat> and so when I have a short name like uh, Dan, that just stores those letters, then a null byte, and then who cares, and then something like blue and a null byte over here. This is all good. But uh, when I have a longer name, what happens is first it reads in the name, so like S-T-E-P-H, a and I, I've now exhausted the room in, in name, and because the compiler decided to put the color array right after it, it would store an E here and then an all byte. So at that point, if I printed out the color, it would print the color of E, just as an, a string E by itself, uh, because then there's a null byte to end that string. But I didn't print out color next. I, I read in color with another scanf, so that's just going to erase what's already there, and replace it with uh, blue or, or purple, whatever it happens to be, and then an all byte. So now from the um, perspective of printf, if we say printf, how long <coughs> is this string that starts under name? It's just going to keep looking through memory until it sees a null byte. So this is the first null byte. And so the, the computer thinks that this whole thing that comes before that null byte is all part of this initial string. And so that's why we're getting this kind of behavior with showing Stephanie purple. So this is all back to what's the, what's the original mistake, the original sin, is that we, uh, we didn't make our array large enough. We allowed to read in some string which was, had a longer length than the uh, size of that array that we declared. So this is kind of just more on the theme from last time of that we have to be conscious of the size of what we're dealing with whenever we have arrays. But with strings, it gets even a little bit more complicated because in strings, we have 
a size, have a size, and they also have a length. So for the example of, um, if I say char color eight equals blue, then in this case, the size is eight. That's how many uh, bytes in memory have been allocated, how many chars in memory have been allocated for the string. But the length is only four. Because the length is just the number of characters until you hit the first null byte. And that's what happens if you call string length, strlen on this, it would return four because that's the logical length of this string. And so the last thing to think about is what's the relationship between the size and length of any string? Well, for any string, we uh, usually know what the size is because we've declared it, and we might not know what the length is because we read it in from the user or something, but we always must have this relationship is that the length has to be at least zero, and it has to be at most size minus one. So for this example of uh, color of size eight or name of size eight for these arrays, the largest string that we could store in there would be size seven. Why seven instead of eight is because we have to have room for that null byte. If you don't have room to store the null byte in your string, then uh, the any time you use that in printf or something else, it won't know what the actual length of that string is and it could run into other parts of memory or all those similar mistakes and pitfalls and downfalls and horrible things like we saw last time with the array index out of bounds. So the takeaway is it's better to overshoot with the size when we're declaring a character array to work as a string. It's better to overshoot to waste a little bit of memory rather than to have index out of bounds errors. Um, and that's the main thing that you should remember, uh, but understanding this uh, thing about how uh, strings are stored as arrays with a special property of having a null byte somewhere in there to indicate where the string ends and the difference between size and length, those are all important concepts to keep in mind moving forward.